Hello and welcome to Radicals 2.2, square root equals square root. Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to continue solving square roots. And the, the difference this time is, in lesson 2.1, we had a, a square root on the left side and a constant number on the right side. In this lesson, we're going to have a square root on both sides. And we're going to solve and see what happens then. Okay, And since we're solving for a square root, the same rules will apply you still have to check your answer at the very, very end. So we're not going to get out of that very soon. Okay, so let's go for our first problem. So we got square root. Oops, I'm in the wrong color. I want blue. Sorry about that. I didn't prep the, the colors very nicely. Okay, so we got square root of 3x plus 4 equals square root of x plus 8. Okay, so... Uh, since there's nothing to add or subtract or divide or multiply on both sides as our, as our usual first step, like in the first lesson, uh, our first step is to get rid of the square roots. So we're going to square both sides because the, that's the only move we have, right? Everything's inside the square root, so we might as well just get rid of the square roots. So we're going to square both sides. And on the left side, we get 3x plus 4. On the right side, we get x plus 8. Okay, so now this problem looks very, very um, familiar because, yeah, we've been doing this kind of problem ever since um, Math 6 or Math 7 or Math 8 or Pre-Algebra, what are you going to call it? Out 1, right? We've done this kind of problem a lot, so we're just going to gather all the x's on one side. So we're going to subtract x so I can gather my x's on the left side. We're going to subtract 4 so I can gather my regular numbers on the right side. And let's see what happens. So we're going to get 2x on the left side. The 4s cancel. On the right side, the x's cancel. And we have 8 minus 4, which is 4. Okay, so we're going to divide by 2. Divide by 2. And we get a potential answer of x equals 2. Okay, we can't just submit this answer right away. right? It, it may or may not work. We still have to check our answer. Oops, how come it's not drawing a line? Okay, there we go. So we're going to check our answer. And like I said, the reason why we have to check the answer is because we did this step called squaring both sides, we kind of created a brand new equation, right? It's, it's originally supposed to be a square root problem, but we squared both sides in, in, the, in the end while we we're solving it. So we kind of created a different equation, okay? And while it may look the same, yeah, that squaring, that squaring effect may have had a, a powerful effect. And you saw it in the last section. Right? One of the answers that we tried to submit, uh, it didn't work anymore. Okay, So we're going to plug in 2 into our original problem. Don't forget, whenever you check answers, you plug into your original problem. So square root of 3 times 2 plus 4 and equals with a question mark because we don't know if they're equal. Yeah, That's what we're checking it for. And then square root of 2 plus 8. And we're going to draw this line because our two sides are not allowed to interact. Okay, so let's look, let's look at what we have on the left. So we have square root of, let's see, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 4. And we're going to add that up and we're going to get square root of 10. And there's nothing else I can do because if I try to break apart 10, it's going to be 2 and 5. And 2 and 5 is not going to get circled. Okay, so let's work with the right side now. So square root of 2 plus 8 is 10. And we're in the same scenario. We can't break that up either. But luckily, we know what that means. It means that when I compare the left side with the right side, these two things match. And why is that good news? Well, because it's going to make us happy. Because that answer is perfectly legit and good to go. Yay. Okay, let's go on to number two. All right, so we got um, three. Oops, I didn't change my color. Change it back to blue. Sorry about that. Okay, so 3 times the square root of x minus 1 equals the square root of 2x plus 26. Okay, so here's, here's the part that's going to be a little tricky and what some students forget to do. So be careful about this. So we're not going to divide by 3 because if I divide by 3, we're going to make the, the right side a fraction, which makes our problem even worse. right? And there's, since there's nothing on the right side that's on the outside, Three is not gonna uh, three is not gonna interact with anything there anyway. So our first step is just to go straight to squaring both sides. Okay. So here's where students make their first mistake. When they square the left side, they don't square the three. They square the square root, but they don't square the three. 
Okay, that's a big mistake. I see it happen all the time. So if you do it, don't worry. You're going to join a very big population of kids that make that mistake where they leave it as a three. Okay, but when you square both sides, you got to square the entire left side, which means you square the three also. And when I square the three, it becomes a nine. When I square the square root of x minus 1, it becomes x minus 1. Okay, so you see how that just played out? So be super careful. The right side is pretty much as normal. Nothing, nothing fancy there. Okay, so now we're going to distribute the 9 to the x and the negative 1. We're going to distribute it, so we're going to multiply 9 times x, 9 times negative 1, and we're going to get 9x minus 9 equals 2x plus 26. Okay, and we're going to gather our letters on one side, numbers on the other. So let's subtract 2x on both sides to get rid of that 2x on the right side. Let's add 9 on the left side so I can get rid of him on the right side. And let's see what happens. So left side we have, what do we have? We have 7x. Right side we have, what is that, 35. Okay, now I'm going to divide by 7. And when I divide by 7, I get x equals 5, potentially equals 5. I don't know if it does. That's what the checking of the answer will prove to us, if it actually equals 5. Okay, so let's check our answer so we can verify if 5 is legit and good to go. So we're going to plug it into our original problem. So 3 times the square root of 5 minus 1 and equals with the question mark, because I don't know if it actually is equal. That's what we're trying to prove here, if they are equal. So what is it? 2 times 5 plus 26. Okay, all right, and draw this little line to remind you that the left and the right side are not allowed to interact. Okay, so left side, what do we got? We got 3 times the quantity, not times the quantity, times the square root of 4. And then the square root of 4 becomes 2 times 2. And I'm going to get my red pen out because I'm going to circle things that match. So the twos match, so they can be circled, and they're going to go outside and join the three. And you're going to multiply them together, and you're going to get six. So my left side is six. So if I can get my right side to be six also, then they'll match, and we're good to go. Okay, so what do we got? We got square root of, what is this, 10 plus 26, which becomes square root of 36 which I'm going to break apart 36 into 6 times 6. And I'm going to get my red pen out to see if I can circle anything. And I can circle a pair of 6s, which means they go on the outside. And I compare left side with right side. And what do I conclude? That the two sides match. And therefore, we're happy, right? Because that means 5 is legit and good to go. OK? All right, number three. Okay, so what do we have here? We have square root of 4x minus 13 equals square root of 2x minus 8. And I hope, I hope by this time you're kind of trying, you're trying, you're trying to get the, I think you're trying to, you're, you're kind of getting the hang of it, right? You're seeing me doing the same thing over and over and over. So hopefully this starts to look familiar and yeah, you're, you're getting more comfortable with this process. Okay, so square both sides to get rid of the square root. So left side, I get 4x minus 13. Right side, I get 2x minus 8. And I want to gather my letters on one side, numbers on the other. So subtract so 2x. Add 13. And what do we have left? We have 2x on the left side. And we have, what is this, 5 on the right side. So divide by 2, and we get x equals 5 over 2. So potentially equals 5 over 2. We don't know that yet, so that's what we're going to check the answer for. Okay, so let's check x equals 5 over 2. And we're going to plug into our original problem. Don't forget, always plug into original problem. So 4 times, the quant four times 5 over 2 minus 13 and we don't know if it's equal that's why I put this question mark above the equal sign because we don't know if they do okay and then 2 times 5 over 2 minus 8 and we're going to draw this line signifying that the left side and the right side they're not allowed to interact okay so what do we got we got um, 4 times 5 over 2 so we got basically 20 over 2 
minus 13. And 20 over 2 is also known as 10, right? And then minus 13. Okay, and on the left side we get negative 3. Okay, so here's where we have come to a new situation that we haven't encountered yet until now. Okay, so we didn't make any mistakes with our calculations, right? Everything is perfectly good to go. I didn't make any mistakes with um, adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing, right? I didn't do any of those things. But our number on the left side is an imaginary number in the square root. Or it's, okay, it's not an imaginary number yet, but it's going to become one. Okay, and when you check your answers, you're not allowed to get an imaginary number or a negative inside the square root for either side. Okay, so I could I could do this right side, yeah, and I'll tell you this already. The right side is going to become square root of negative three. So I'm going to get kids and say, um, yeah, they match. So this answer is good to go. But no, this answer is not good to go. This answer is no is not valid. We cannot use this answer. And the reason why we cannot use this answer is because when I checked my answer, we ended up with an imaginary number. We ended up with i root three. And when you check your answers you're not allowed to get imaginary results, okay? And it doesn't matter if you get it on, if you get the imaginary number on just one side, yeah? You get it on one side or both sides or just the right side or just the left side, it doesn't matter. As long as you have an imaginary number appearing on that left side or on that right side, it's game over. You don't even have to do the other side, right? It's game over. That number that you're trying to check is no longer valid. So since 5 over 2 is the only answer we had, then we actually have no answers. We have no real solutions. Okay? So this problem, very important, because it's going to bring up a situation that if you didn't pay attention to this problem, or you didn't watch this problem on the video, or you're going to get this problem wrong come quiz day or test day. Okay? So be sure you watch the entire video, because I, I can keep track of how much my students are watching. And a lot of you guys are not watching the whole video. Okay? So be careful with that. Okay, so last problem of the day, problem number four. All right, so we got square root of 3x plus 16 equals square root of 4 minus x. Okay, so since there's nothing on the outside, my only option is to square both sides. Okay. So I get 3x plus 16 on the left side equals 4 minus x on the right side. Okay, then we're going to consolidate our, our numbers. So letters on the left, numbers on the right. So we're going to add x both sides minus 16 both sides. Okay, so we get 4x on the left side. We get negative 12 on the right side. Then we're going to divide by 4 on both sides. Divide by 4, divide by 4. And we get x equals negative 3. So we don't know if it's equal to negative 3. It's not been checked yet, but as far as we know, x equals negative 3 is the answer we have at hand. So let's check it. And if it works, good, we can submit that as an answer. And if it doesn't, we just write no real solutions. Okay, so make sure you plug into your original problem. So square root of 3 times negative 3 plus 16 and then equals with the question mark because we don't know if it actually does, but that's what we're here for. We're going to check it and 4 minus negative 3 and draw our lines so that it signifies the two sides are not allowed to interact. Okay, so left side, what do we get? We get negative 9 plus 16, which makes radical or square root 7. That's all we can do with the left side. Okay, so let's check the right side. So we got two negatives in a row, which makes 4 plus 3 in actuality, which eventually makes square root of 7. And that's all I can do for that side. So when I compare both sides, I can see the smile starting to appear in your face, right? These guys match. And that brings up a smile on our face because this answer is good to go. Yay! Okay, so negative 3 is a legit solution. We can put it on that answer line. And that concludes our last problem. All right, so I hope this made sense. I brought up a couple of new things that I hope you remember. Yeah, don't forget about the things that I brought up that were kind of new in this lesson. 
And yeah, I will see you in class. Good luck on this assignment. Bye-bye.